Every filmmaker creates a world. The important thing is to do it with confidence so that your audience feels comfortable in that world. There's this moment where all the prep you've done has brought you to day one of shooting. So the actors show up, it's whatever your first shot in the morning. They've been called an hour earlier because they're already in makeup. The AD pulls them out of makeup. You all meet on the set and you try not to say, okay, you go here, you go here, you go there. The two, there are two shows that come to mind when you ask me what did I enjoy working on the most. One of them was very successful, and I did 14 episodes of the show, and that was Prison Break. Um, and the one that's a little bit more obscure, but I really had a great time on, was Flash Forward, um, which unfortunately not that many people saw, but um, the team that I was working for and the um, amount of energy and talent that went into it were probably as great as anything I've ever worked on. And it was just a shame for me that that show didn't make it because it was really, I got to operate on all cylinders, you know, as a filmmaker. You know what though, I'll give you, I'll give you, that's an interesting thing to speak to because it's, it's, if you don't mind me jumping into no. your questions. I did V and while I was doing V, I knew it was going to be canceled. And I don't always know that, but I didn't think that the ideas of the writers were strong enough to match the material. And sometimes I feel that way and the show turns out to be a big hit, so I don't claim to know everything. But on that show, I was not surprised when it went down because I thought it was potentially very interesting. I thought the ideas could be very interesting, but the scripts weren't very interesting. And, you know, the one thing that the successful shows seem to have in common is the writer knows what the audience wants. There's no question that Chandra rhymes. You don't have to love the show. I happen to like the show, but, but whether you love it or not, you can't argue with her ability to satisfy an audience. You, you, you get a script and there's something in, even in scripts that aren't her best, right? She's somehow managed, they've done 230 episodes of Grey's Anatomy. Can you believe yeah, that? 12, 12 maybe seasons. more, maybe more now. That was when the last time I did. It might be 250 now, right? That seems impossible that somebody can write that many shows and have them be of interest. But she's got that ability and she, and her, and she hires good people to work with her. So, to me, um, certain shows, it's very difficult to make a successful television show, and that's what I've learned. And I don't do it, I only work with them, but I'm always impressed with people who can really, you know, find their audience. I think it's just the opposite. I, I'm excited by it because, first of all, I've, I've worked enough that I'm okay. <laughs> it's like, if I don't get hired again, I'll will survive. So that's I mean I think it's very maybe more difficult starting out today, but I think there's no question the level of of writing in television has gotten much better. If you call television, if you include all these other, you know, delivery systems mm -hmm. like Netflix and I do, Showtime, HBO, AMC, there's great stuff happening and it's coming from other countries too. If you look at stuff coming from England or stuff coming from Scandinavia or wherever, you know. Um, so, I think if you're if you if you're an American who wants to preserve the hegemony of the Hollywood system, I think then you're in trouble. But I don't have any worry about that. I, I as an artist, I just want to see people make good stuff, and as a viewer, I just want to watch good stuff. And there's I literally can't watch all the stuff I'd like to right now because there's too much good things. And in the 80s and 90s, I never watched television because it was just so horrible. I think I went 20 years without watching television. Even if I was making it, I wasn't watching it. Because I just didn't, there was nothing to watch. For me, that was speaking to my issues, you know. I mean, and movies were so much better. Now, you know, you, you look at, I mean, this is, this is an interesting question. 
Friday night comes around and you're looking in the cinema section of the newspaper and you're saying well, that doesn't, that's for kids, that's for kids, that's for teenagers, that's for you know, that's too gruesome, that's a horror film. He says, or then you think, gee, I've got a whole queue of TiVoed movies, you know, I mean television shows that I can watch that from the last week, you know, there's the affair, or there's there's Ray Donovan, or there's Masters of Sex, or there's whatever. I'm gonna stay home. Now, I miss the experience of going out and sitting in the cinema and seeing it on a big screen, but I don't miss it so much that I'd rather go do that and watch Ant-Man or Iron Man or Superman or Batman. I, I just don't have any interest in that. I think I enjoy watching a good show from HBO more. So maybe it's just I'm getting old and maybe, maybe people your age want to go to the cinema and see those movies. But the great news is there's a lot of stuff, no matter how old I get, there's a lot of stuff being made that I want to watch. So. Two more network shows, and I think you're about to ask me, would I rather do cable shows? And I think yes, but, you know, it's like, it's my job. So I'm not going to spend as much energy as I might have 20 years ago to try to get that job. Now, I have a friend who's relatively my age and he's really done a great job of transitioning from network shows to the cable shows. But my interests always lie, I mean, I'm writing a book, I'm making a documentary. I'm, I'd rather do something for myself than worry about the level of television I'm directing. It's true, but you know, 40 million people will probably vote for some asshole Republican, too. And that doesn't mean that it, you know, has any standing in my mind. I mean, I don't, I look at those clowns up on stage and I'm thinking, poor country, but I don't have to vote for them. I don't have to listen to them. I certainly don't want to live under any, you know, regime of those people. So I just allow for that, you know, and say, you know, just find the good. I mean, the interesting thing when, when AMC was coming out with Mad Men, Nobody was watching. I mean, less than a million people were watching the show, and it was just, it was the best thing on television, I thought. And so I know that I'm not in the majority, but, you know, I think, um, and I don't mean to be pretentious saying I'm an artist, but like, you know, my job is, is, is not to make something that's so popular. My job is to do something that I think is good and, you know, and to find, and to find work. Those are the two things I try to do. Um, I, I think not being overwhelmed is really hard. Um, for me, um, trying to keep calm during the prep period and to organize myself so I can, get, I can get a schedule together that I can make. And I seem to do a good job at it, but not without a lot of anxiety. And if, if for me, if I could eliminate or cut down the anxiety, and just say, it's gonna work out, breathe, you know, I would be better off.